Hello everyone. In today's session, you are going to discuss a special type of automata, a finite automata. We call it as Moore and Mearley machine. So for whatever is the finite automata we have discussed, it might be either an NFA, DFA or Epsilon NFA. What it do, it is all your language acceptance category. Right, all your NFA, DFA, Epsilon, NFA or equivalent and uh, those are designed to check whether the input belongs to the language or not. We call that category as language acceptance category. Okay, so we'll check for example when I construct a, a DFA to check whether the input belongs to, when, whether whenever the input starts with A. So whenever the input that we give starts with A, our DFA has to accept or the DFA has to be rejected. Okay, so that is what we have discussed so far. So that is called a language acceptance. So we we take a language and to recognize that kind of language, we create a NFA or DFA. And whenever the input is recognized, then we produce, uh, then we will either accept it or reject it. Okay, so that is the category we have seen so far. And there is one special variant of this finite automata, which is going to produce an output for your input. Okay, so for example, when I have this, again DFA is the basement of it. So we are going to construct a DFA and that DFA is for recognition for this language acceptance. And whenever we recognize that, we are going to produce the output for that too. For example, I will take an example of converting all the A's in your input as 0, all the B's as 1. Okay, so all B's will be converted to 1. So here is an example, I have AB, AB. For each A, the output has to be 0 and each B, the output has to be 1. Okay, so here an output is produced by recognizing that component of your input. So we need a DFA to recognize whether the input is A or B and based on the input, we are going to produce an extra output signal. Okay, so this is a variant of your finite automata, especially used in your digital circuits. For all the sequential circuit where uh, based on the current uh, situation, we are going to produce the output as on and off signal. The uh, circuit diagram is represented as a finite automata, finite state machine and the output signals produced based on this Moore or Mearley machine. Okay, a finite automata with output, we call it as a automata with output and there are two variants of it like we have this two machines, one is your Mearley machine, another one is your Moore machine. Okay, and based on the way in which it produce output, we have these two variants again, these two are equivalent. Okay, so any automata that produce output might be either Moore or Mearley machine and we can have a way of converting Moore machine to Mearley machine and Mearley machine to Moore machine. Okay, a Moore machine is one where the output is produced. Based on the way the output produced, the variation actually exists. Moore machine actually produce the output based on current state. Whatever is the current state, it produces an output. And merely machine, it is based on current state and input signal. I'll show you an example, you'll understand it better. So right now, you just know that uh, Moore machine produce output based on the present state alone. Whereas merely machine produce the output based on the present state and the present input that is given at a time. Okay. And uh, the re representation actually varies also here. The representation here is like usually we have your inputs alone. Okay, in this case, your input is A and B. Your input is made up of A and B combination. And here we use a special symbol that is going to represent what output it is going to produce. The output produced is a combination of 0 and 1. Okay, one additional component is added over here that is going to represent your output. I'll show you an example for the Moore machine, Mealy machine. And in the next video, I'll show you a detailed description of the way in which a Moore machine is represented and the way in which your Mealy machine is represented along with the example. Okay, in order to understand the concept of Moore, and Moore machine and Mealy machine, I'll give you an example here. So first, I'll start with your Mealy machine. I'll take the same example, a Mealy machine that is going to convert when input is of the combination of A and B. Okay, and for each A, we are going to produce output as 0. For each B, the output will be produced as 1. A as 0, B as 1, 1. Okay, we are going to construct a uh, automata for it. So, the first step in the construction is we are going to design a DFA. Okay, a deterministic finite automata is the base model for this Moore and Mearley machine. 
So we are going to start the starting state and here we have to recognize the input as either A or B, right? So whenever the input is A, I have a transition to Q1 state. And whenever the input is B, I have a transition to Q2 state. Okay, so since for A, I have a different operation output to be produced and for B, a different output to be produced. So I have two different links for representing both the things. Okay, so this is easy way of construction. You can minimize it later if you want. So I want to show you, I want to, I don't want to complicate this. So I want to show you all possible uh, criteria. Okay, so as I told you, it is a DFA, right? What is a DFA? A DFA is something from each and every state on each and every input symbol, we should have a transition. So Q0, when the input is A and B, we have a transition. Now we have to know what happens when there is an uh, Q1 on AB and Q2 on AB possibilities too. Okay, so one way is, for all A's, I plan to stay in Q1 itself. So for Q1, I'll make a transition here. Whenever the input is A, I stay in Q1 itself. And whenever the input comes to B, I have a, I can make a transition to Q2 state. You don't need all the states, but to make you to feel, understand everything, I just have all the possibilities. Okay. Now in Q2, whenever the input is A, I have a transition to Q1 state. I, I keep the state A for Q1. Okay, Q1 is the place where for all your A transition it comes. Q0 on A, Q2 on A, sorry, Q0 on A for all A's we have the transition in Q1. And for all the B's we have the transition on Q2. Q0 on A, Q1 on A, Q2 on A, it stays in B. Okay, so now DFA is done to recognize whether the input is A or B. And remember, we don't have a final state in Moore or merely machine nearly or more machine we don't have a final state here so now a merely machine will take the present state and based on the present input it is going to produce the output and what output it need to produce q naught when the input is a we have to produce the output as zero and q1 when the input is a a ha we have to produce output as zero and q2 when the input is a the output to be produced is 0. Got it? And whenever it is B, the output to be produced is 1. Q0 when the input is B, produce 1 as output. Q1 when the input is B, produce 1 as output. And Q2 when the input is B, produce 1 as output. Okay? So you can even make it very simple. One single self loop in the state of Q0. Whenever the input is A, I can also redraw this. See? This is one way of representation. Another way of representation is I can have one single state, starting state alone. So whenever the input is A, we produce 0 as an output. Whenever the input is B, we produce 1 as an output. So this is your input, sigma, and this is the output that is produced as del. Okay, so either you can represent like this. In order to make you to understand the all possible ways, I have given this condition okay now let us check how the input transition is done okay so for example i take the same way of a b a b b we start the transition with q naught state q naught when the input is a where it goes it goes to q1 state Q0 when the input is A, it produces 0 as an output and go to Q1 state. Q1 when the input is B, where it goes. Q1 when the input is B, it goes to Q2 state and what output it produces? It produces 1 as an output. And Q2 when the input is A, Q2 when the input is A, it goes back to Q1 state and it produces 0 as an output. Okay, and Q1 when the input is B, Q1 when the input is B, it goes to Q2. Q1 when the input is B, it goes to Q2, producing 1 as an output. Okay, and finally, Q2 when the input is B. Q2 when the input is B, it is a self-loop condition. It stays in Q2 itself and output produced is 1. Okay, see, for all the A's, it is converted to 0. For all the B's, it is converted to 1. So this is the output that is needed and we got the same output over here. Okay, so this is how a Miali machine works. As I told you, the output is produced based on the current state and current input. 
okay so the output here is based on current state and current input function okay so this is your merely machine i just gave you this transition diagram representation alone in the next example i'll show you how to what are the different other ways in which you can represent this more and merely machine okay so now more machine uh, merely machine i think you understand how it works and next comes your merely machine uh, merely machine is a bit uh, like one, one since we want to understand merely machine i show you this example this way of representation see i'll i'll tell you here sorry more machine more machine works by output in state okay so for the same example for all a's it has to convert to zero all the b's converted to ones okay let us consider the same example here now we will start constructing a dfa okay dfa is the basement for either more machine or merely machine okay starting from the state q not on q not when the input is a let us try have the transition to q1 okay we have one state transition where all the a's will get into it when the input is b we have one state specifically having for all the inputs as b okay whenever the input is a we have to output zero whenever the input is b we have to output one okay i'll just make a slight modification here okay now your more more machine works like when the input is a it has to produce zero as a output so the state is associated with output in case of your merely machine the transition has the output whereas in case of your more machine your output is associated with the state so whenever the input is b we make a transition to q2 which is going to produce one as a output okay so we have two states and each state is associated with the output okay so let us consider q0 when the input is a and b we have the transition now we'll check what happened q0 q1 when the input is a q1 when the input is b so q1 when the input is a it has to produce zero as a output and the zero output is produced here in q1 so i can have a transition here so q1 when the input is a it has to produce zero as a output and q1 when the input is b it has to produce one as a output and the one output is produced in the state q2 so i'm having a transition from q1 to q2 when the input is b okay now uh, similarly we can complete this q2 when the input is a it has to produce zero as a output so i'm just making a transition to this place q2 when the input is a it has to produce zero as a output so i have a transition to q1 and q2 when the input is b it has to produce one as a output so i have to associate one along with this so one is associated with q2 so i have a self loop here okay so this is how a more machine works more machine from each and every state has the output associated with it so we have to be very careful when we are choosing the state okay so for all this output to be zero output to be produced as zero i have a state and for all the states that is going to produce uh, for all your output to be produced as one i have a state for it okay and remember a more machine will have a output for each and every state so starting from the starting state it has it also has to produce a output so for our example for our consideration i'll just start with this zero okay you can either add zero or one for this transition on starting state so i'll show you an example how it works let us take the same example a b a now starting from the state q not q not when the input is a where it goes q not when the input is a it goes to q1 and q1 when the input is b q1 when the input is b it goes to q2 state and q2 when the input is a it goes to q1 state okay now the output produced for each and every state is for q0 the output is 0 q1 the output is 0 q2 the output is 1 and q1 the output is 0 okay so this is a speciality of your uh, more machine for more machine the number of output produced okay will be more than that of the input that is given 
okay when the input is of the length w the output produced will be of the length w plus 1 okay one extra element is needed for the processing since each state is associated with your in uh, with your output function when i take the input of length w i need w plus 1 number of states to process it right since each state is associated with the output your output produced will have one extra bit so we usually will ignore the first bit okay the starting state you have a transition right so that will be ignored and we have the remaining bits alone okay so this is an example for Moore machine now I will I have taken the same transition diagram for Moore and Miali machine and in Moore machine each state is associated with the output whereas in Miali machine each transition is associated with the output now coming to the definition you will understand it right uh, a Miali machine will produce output based on current state and input okay Miali machine produce output based on the current state and the input it produce the output whereas Moore machine current state alone each state is associated with the output okay so here you don't have a final state and you have an additional component called an output function okay so along with the input you have a output function too so this video is general intro introduction video for you to understand what is Moore machine and what is merely machine. In the next session, I'll take one example for Moore machine, completely show you the entire description of it. Okay, we have a transition diagram representation, transition table representation, and a tuple notation too. And similarly, for Moore machine, also we have the same. And to prove the equivalence of Moore and Murley machine, we have a conversion from Moore machine to Murley machine and Murley machine to Moore machine. Okay, so with this, this entire chapter about this Moore and Murley machine is completed. Thank you.